In this video we look at the biography of Jerome David Salinger. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video, and also write in the comments about whose biography to make a video about. Biography The famous American writer Jerome David Salinger became one of the most influential authors of the 20th century. The writer's most famous publication was the novel Above Broken Lie. In terms of volume, his contribution to literature cannot be called great, but few writers could be placed on the same level as him. Childhood and Youth Jerome David Salinger was born on January 1, 1919, in New York City. The boy's father, Solomon Salinger, was a Lithuanian-born Jew who was a wholesaler of smoked meats and cheeses. Miriam's mother, who before marriage was named Mary Gillick, who was of Scotch-Irish descent, converted to Judaism. In addition to Jerome, his older sister Doris was brought up in the family. The difference between the children was eight years and two months. The father sought to raise his son an educated man. In 1936 the young man graduated from military school in the city of Valley Forge. It was here that he made his debut in literature. Jerome wrote three stanzas for the school anthem, which is still performed today. In the summer of 1937 Salinger attended lectures at New York University, and after a year he was in Poland, where in the city of Bydgosz at the request of his father he studied sausage making. When he returned home, he attended lectures at Ursinus College in Pennsylvania, and in 1939 he entered Columbia University, where he attended a course of lectures on short history given by W. Burnett. As a result, David did not graduate from any institution and showed no career aspirations. By this he displeased his father, with whom he ended up quarreling forever. In the spring of 1942, Jerome was drafted into the Army, where he graduated from the Officer and Sergeant School of the Signal Corps. The following year, at the rank of sergeant, the man was transferred to the counterintelligence service and sent to Nashville, Tennessee. Creativity The main characters in most of Salinger's works are children under the age of 17. Nevertheless, he can hardly be called a children's writer. In his works, the author raises the theme of confrontation between the teenager and the world around him. The characters of the works encapsulate an existence that does not find certain boundaries. The debut story Young People was published in 1940 by Story Magazine. As for the first serious fame, it came after the publication of Good Fishing Banana Fish, which describes the day of Seymour Glass and his wife. Eleven years after the publication of the first work, on July 16, 1951, the only novel Above the Chasm and the Rye was printed, the author worked on this story for ten years. Literary critics of the time approved the novel, which is still popular. However, the book was banned in some countries and states of the United States because of its depressiveness and profanity. By the time the novel came out, 26 of Jerome's works had been published in various editions, including seven of the nine short stories. In 1953 they formed a separate collection called Nine Stories. In the 60s the work of Franny and Zoe and Raise the Rafters, Carpenters were published. Personal Life In 1942 Jerome began dating Una, daughter of playwright Eugene O'Neill. But she soon met Charlie Chaplin and subsequently married him. Salinger's first wife was the German Sylvia Welter. He first arrested the Nazi and then married her. Together they returned to America, where they lived for some time in the home of Jerome's parents. But the marriage was short-lived, and before a year, the couple broke up. According to Salinger's daughter, the reason for the breakup was incompatibility of opinion. Later the author came up with a contemptuous nickname for the girl Salva, which from English translates spit. The second wife of the writer was a student, Claire Douglas, daughter of the art critic Robert Langton Douglas. The meeting took place in 1950, at which time Claire was 16 years old and the author was 31. The girl from a respected British family had traveled across the Atlantic to get away from the war. Some sources claim that the author seduced young Claire, but this is not entirely accurate. At the time Jerome was improving spiritually and abstaining from intimacy. An Indian guru acted as his mentor, and the practices are reflected in the writer's works. Claire and Jerome married in 1955, and the family had a daughter, Margaret, and a son, Matthew. Salinger insisted that his wife drop out four months before graduation and move in with him. The girl gave in to his entreaties and did as her lover asked. The house in which the young family lived could only at a stretch be called habitable. Nevertheless, as Margaret reports from the words of her mother, the already famous writer demanded from his wife gourmet meals and a change of linen twice a week. As a child, her daughter was often sick, but the man, based on his beliefs, refused to call a doctor. Claire later confessed to her daughter that she literally walked on the edge, 
contemplating committing suicide during her pregnancy. According to Margaret's beliefs, she and her brother were born by accident, the girl believes they were hardly welcome children for Jay. D. But the writer turned out to be a good father, he often played with the little ones and entertained them with stories of his own composition. Nevertheless, he was constantly irresistibly attracted to women. In 1966, the writer divorced Claire, and soon her place was taken by a journalist Joyce Maynard, who at that time was 18 years old. Salinger's last wife was Colleen, she was 50 years younger. Death After the novel Above the Gap and the Rye became popular, Salinger led a reclusive life. After 1965, the author stopped publishing, composing stories only for himself. In New Hampshire, Jerome David Salinger died a natural death at his home on January 27, 2010. The writer's literary agent reported that Salinger had injured his pelvic bone in 2009, but was doing well for a long time. The author was succeeded by his last wife Colleen and son Matthew. The author's life was full of interesting facts, and some of his quotes have become legendary. The documentary Beyond the Chasm and the Rye tells the story of Salinger's personality and life. Interesting Facts in school, Jerome was often mocked because of his middle name, David. To avoid trouble, Salinger forbade his teachers to address him by his middle name. Incidentally, the boy studied very poorly, of school successes can be distinguished only expressive performances at drama club performances. In 1942, the writer went into the service, where he participated in the famous operation to land paratroopers in Normandy. Returning home, Salinger was hospitalized with a diagnosis of nervous breakdown. The author did not easily survive his popularity after the publication of Catcher in the Rye. Jerome did not want to communicate with journalists, led a reclusive life. The writer categorically denied the attempt to create a collection of his letters. The writer was engaged in the study of alternative medicine, Hinduism, and Buddhism. His worldview was very peculiar. Despite the fact that Salinger bought himself a house in the distance, near the woods, fenced it off and hung up signs reading No Trespassing, the writer could be regularly seen in the bar with various girls. Salinger did give one interview to a high school student for the Claremont Daily Eagle. When the writer learned that the text of the article made the front page of the local newspaper, he became enraged. It was after this incident that Jerome, feeling betrayed, fenced the house with a high fence. Salinger willed to publish his unpublished works between 2015 and 2020. Among them are autobiographical accounts of his interrogations during World War II. In the story, The Lost Letter, the author's real phone number was published, 6036755244. In late 2016, the Center for Cartoon Studies Educational Center opened a call for applications from artists wanting to live in Salinger's former residence. A small stipend was awarded to the winner allowing them to concentrate on creating a special piece of work. One day, the literary critic Ian Hamilton, clearly not looking for the easy way, tried to write a biography of the author. But Jerome was so infuriated that he sued Hamilton to enjoin the use of previously unpublished letters. There were three numbered cats living in Salinger's house, Kitty 1, Kitty 2, and Kitty 3. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video.